What's up, guys? Welcome to the podcast. So today, another special guest, Sam Burns, is in the house. So Sam, uh, me and Sam have a, a long history of projects, things that we've done, and really he is the, the, the reason that I live where I live, that I had the business that I had, and you know, just a lot of different things. So we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff. You guys are going to learn a lot today about Sam, me, and, and everything. So and everything about your career <laughs> and, and, and how Matt became Matt back. You're right. So, um, so I'm really happy that you're here. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen you in New Hope. Yes. So being able to have you back in the town that I uh, came out to. So I think we should just get into it okay. so that that way people that are out there will kind of understand, what's understand going on. what we're talking about and why we're sitting here okay, together. So, so. So, so let me, uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this, because you know you're one of my favorite people in the world, and uh, you're not going to flash like the old picture of, with the scissors thing, are you? No, I don't. <laughs> okay. I, I, no, I won't do okay. that. So I'm, I was traveling around the country doing a tour with, I think, Donald Scott's Carbon Call. Okay, yeah. And uh, I was in Iowa, maybe? Des Moines, Iowa, Des yeah. Des Moines, Iowa. Yeah. And I said to a few different people, so this is going to be like a hands-on class or whatever, can you duplicate my haircut? And I thought you were one of the educators. Right. And I said, can you duplicate my haircut? And you did my haircut better than I did it, but I was the guy showing it. <laughs> so this was, but this was the thing, too. I was in beauty school. And I had um, really fallen in love with Paul Mitchell products, yep. and I wanted to uh, become a like an educator, right? right? So I actually I didn't really have a car that could drive that would actually I think physically make it three hours. So uh, one of the educators drove me to the show, and we were in that hotel room. And I remember you came walking in, <laughs> and it was just like I was like, "Who is this guy?" Like you were dressed all in black. You had like this like this attitude about you, like when you walked in and, and you guys all started doing the haircut. Well, I had been watching that DVD and I trying to learn it. Now I found yeah. this out. So I'm sitting on the bed and I'm thinking, man, I wish I could try that. And then when you said, would you like to try it? I was like, yes, I would like to, uh, to try it. So I hopped up and, and you did, did the technique. Yeah. And then I said to you, so I was, really it was the stroking technique. Yeah. That's what it was. So I was yeah. really taken back of how, how great you were. And I'm like, so what's your name? And you said, my name's Matt. And I'm like, what are your dreams? And you're like, I want to be a platform artist someday. So then the next day, uh, I did this the show. show or yeah. whatever. And then I said, so there's this kid who does not know that I'm going to do this right now, but right. I want to bring him up on stage. And I'm like, so you shared with me yesterday that you want to be a platform artist. So now's your opportunity. And you did my haircut. Yeah. And uh, then what I didn't know that night was evidently you spent the night in your car or something. So that was a different time. So we left that show. I was excited. Okay. Went back to school and you gave me your business card. Yeah. So I said, so I ended up calling the salon in New Hope and I said, you know, where's Sam going to be next? And it was in Nebraska. Okay. And that oh, yeah, was, yeah. yeah. So Nebraska was eight hours from where I lived. So I drove to Nebraska and and that's that's when I slept in the car. And you slept in your car. But yeah. I did not know this, so I saw you again, and I'm like, oh, so you're that kid that I really feel you want to be a platform artist. Yeah. And uh, I did the event, and then I was staying at an Embassy Suites hotel. Yeah. Because I knew that it was two rooms. Uh huh. And and I'm like, so I want you to. So the next day, I found out that you slept in your car. Yep. And I was mortified by it because I was thinking like, he could have at least slept in like the pullout couch yeah. area. And you shared with me that you'd never been in a hotel before. Yeah. Well, I'd been in hotels, but I, I definitely did not have the money to to do it at that point. Right. right. So like with my family growing up, I'd been in hotels, but never like. So the owner of that distributor, you talked to him. Yes. And then he came up to me because I was going to drive home that night because that's you said, are you going to be here tomorrow? And I said, no, I I uh, I got a shower is basically right. what right. it was. Um, I've already slept on my car. Yeah. So you were like um, you talked to the owner of the distributorship. He saw me on stage the, the day before or that yeah. day. And he was like, you know, would you stay if we put you up in the hotel? So I said, yeah, of course. And you uh, so I went up to my hotel room and there was a microwave and there was like all this stuff. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, this is the greatest thing that has ever happened. So so from that point on, that was where it was really like th for me, like the turning point, because yeah. you put me back on stage. You got to teach a private class with you the next day. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, then the next step, I went to the Paul Mitchell gathering, yep. um, which I was invited to by that distributor in Iowa. 
and you were there, hung out with you the whole weekend. That was a pretty intense weekend. Yes. And uh, I interviewed with Kelly Cardenas at Robert's Salon. Yes. Yeah, yeah, You yeah, sent me yeah, there. Yeah. And then um, I came back, and I remember you said to me, um, how did it go? What do you think? And I said, you know what? I think, I think I'm going to come work with you in New Hope. And I said, right? you don't want to come work with me. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no, I think I want to. I said, yeah, because this is the thing. And I think a lot of people um, out there, when you're looking for a mentor, it's not necessarily, to me, it's about somebody that takes care of somebody. Yeah. And from the minute I met you in that hotel room, you let me do that haircut. You put me on stage that weekend. In Nebraska, all that stuff happened. So it just felt like I want to go work. I wanted to work for somebody that had belief in what I was. Yeah. And not to just go work for somebody that, you know, has no idea who you are. And then you're, you know, so I, I, I felt that connection. So I ended up, I went to beauty school for a few more months, got enough hours to work in PA, and then right. flew out to New Hope where we're at right now. Well, and then I was freaked out because you were the only out of state. Like I had just opened up this salon you know, right. maybe two years earlier. Yeah. I had one other employee maybe. Yeah. And, uh. And now I'm going to have this employee that's going to come from another state and, and, right. and this young kid. And I'm like, and now I'm going to be responsible for him. <laughs> we hooked up a, a one bedroom apart, one bedroom furnished apartment for you. Yeah. Uh, you, you didn't have a car or something. I didn't bring a car. So no. You, so the, the, so we're here in New Hope now, which is where this all began. But yeah. You got this furnished apartment and the salon was a mile away. Yeah. And you walked a mile every day. I would say a half a mile. But it was like uh, it was it's definitely it's all of Main Street. It was all of Main Hope. Street. You, yeah, New Hope's only a mile long. Yeah, so, that's true. Yeah, uh, and I and you had this really cool pair of shoes that you loved. I did. That you uh, loved yeah. these shoes. Yeah. and you would walk in the rain, and you would walk in the snow, and you were, and you were always the first person in the salon and the last person to leave, and you never slapped a smile off of your face. And I remember, and I started calling you Main Street Matt because yeah. you only knew Main Street here in New Hope. Right, and. Uh, at one point, I remember you had holes in the bottom of your shoes, and I said, "You got to get another pair of shoes." And you're like, "I, I it's the only pair of shoes I have. I can't afford it." So, th the, so the that reason was why true. the reason why I wanted to bring that up is nobody wanted it better, better than you did. You know, you you studied, you know, this haircut. You followed whether it was me or whether it was whomever. Right. Uh, then you drove eight hours, and I recall you telling your clients later on that you dug for quarters in the yeah. cushions to try to get – you You slept in your car. You didn't have a shower. Then you gave up your loving family, who I've got to know over the years, yeah. left all of them in Iowa to come out here to Pennsylvania yeah. to be entrusted with me in this furnished apartment because you wanted it that bad. Yeah, and I think back to those times, like, it's actually very – it's almost unbelievable to me because like even to this day like getting my parents out here to come visit and stuff is still yeah. a difficult thing in a way but um what they must have done to scrounge together the money to fly me to vegas because i didn't have any money yeah to to somehow get me to vegas and then to just probably put together whatever money they could and then s get me to new hope you know and i didn't have i had a car but i had a car that wouldn't have got me to new hope it's a thousand miles from where i grew yeah. up you know so um but the funny thing is, so while I was away, I had um, a, a, a $400 Cavalier that I bought, like a Chrysler Cavalier, yeah. right? And it was a teal color, and my dad spray-painted Paul Mitchell down the side <laughs> of it. <laughs> and I remember, so at Christmas, like, so I was here for a few months, and I went back for Christmas. I yeah. had just met Christina. And, and um, your mom made me a beautiful Christmas tree skirt, which yeah. I still have to this day. Yes. So oh, you do really? Yeah. Oh, so um, so yeah. So my so we went back in December. I was actually a little like homesick and just not sure what I was gonna do or whatever. And uh, Christina, and I had met Christina. Yes. So I met Christina in like November of also in a bar off of Main Street here in New York. Yes, <laughs> that's all singing you do. karaoke. Yeah. yeah. So uh, so I met Christina, and then um, you know just decided at that point I, I was had to come back for sure and. And we just, you know, and then th my career kept going. I brought my brother back. I drove the Cavalier the yep. whole way. It made it. And I, and I drove that car for a while. And, you know, it's, so it's just, it, I'm thankful for all of those opportunities that happened that little bit because it put me on the path of where, 
you know, everything has gone since then to, uh, to, you know, be here to, to have your help to, to meet Christina, to buy your salon. So let's get into, so a few years after we've been working together, I got, off, I got a phone call from Robert Crumb. I was doing color. Yeah. Uh, Robert Crumb was put together this new club called the Platform Artist Club. Yeah. It was <coughs> like a sampling of big salons, small salons. And my salon's small. Like, if anybody yeah. knows about Hello Gorgeous, it was a 750 square foot salon, which you know. Yeah. I mean, it became your salon. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, you know, I bought that building. I rehabbed it. I had to sleep upstairs because I couldn't afford to go anywhere else. Yeah. Uh, and then, but they had this business, this, like, a, a group of successful salon owners, and I represented four chairs or smaller, and I clearly said something smart at one of these meetings. I don't know what it was, but uh, I don't know who might have not been our receptionist at the time, but they said, Robert Cromies is on the phone. And I'm like, Re really? <laughs> and I pick up the phone, and Robert's like, Sammy, I think your dreams are bigger than where you currently are, and I'd right. like you to come out and work with me in my salon world, and please don't say no. And then... I was doing somebody's color, <laughs> and they're like, what's up? I'm like, evidently, I'm going to California. Right. And I did the Charlie's Angels speaker thing where I'd call into the salon. You got to run the salon for the summer because yep. we didn't know what was going to happen. And then you called me and said, uh, it seems like you're going to stay in California, and I don't have a lot of money, uh, but you know, would you take this offer? Yeah. And, uh, and there's nobody in the world that I would have rather given my business to because I felt like you were my son or my brother. And... I got to know your family, and I think you have such an incredibly great work ethic, and I think you have just the most amazing heart and the most amazing, uh, I think you are a man of character and a man of dreams and, and, and one of the hardest working people I've ever known. Well, thanks. And I wanted to, uh, and I wanted to make that happen for you. Yeah. And then you wrote me a three-page letter of why you were going to change the name from Hello Gorgeous to Salon <laughs> Gratitude. I did, yes. And and that and I think I still have that letter to this day too. I okay. thought it was very touching and very thoughtful. And you yeah, you've always been a very grateful man, and and I just really loved it. But why I wanted to share this story this morning is, I currently work in the Paul Mitchell School world, and I get to work with thousands of future professionals every year. And I I don't know, or if you have coaching or. You know, so many people want to know how to become Insta famous. Yeah. And if they look at you now, and I certainly don't want to pull the curtain behind the Wizard of Oz of all this great thing that you're doing right now, but right. Uh, I don't know that a lot of people would have known, besides me, uh, you know, where you came from and how hard you worked to make this happen, to become this great media superstar who now has a, a million followers and. Uh, well. I, you know what I think? I think it all goes back to what people don't realize. You're not Insta famous, you know, and maybe some people are, but they'll, I think they'll quickly fade out if yeah. they're not talented. So you have to have, like, the reason I can teach on a video is because I was teaching 75 classes a year for Paul Mitchell for 10 years, you and know? And the whole time you worked with me, you walked around the salon all day long with your scissors in your hand. Yeah. Uh, working on the stroking technique, you worked on mannequins. Yeah, you, you never took. Uh, at one point, I think we called you Edward Scissorhands. Like you, you never took shears out of your hands. Like yeah, whether you were walking around the salon or whatever, you they became an appendage of yours. Yeah, so, so rehearsal and pr and perfect practice. Yeah. became part of your daily routine. Yep, and that's I mean that's the key. Like uh, you can't you can just jump out of beauty school and become popular on the internet. It's possible, but the longevity of your career is what you should be focusing on. And so as lo if you're not studying and learning along the way, like three years ago even when I started making videos, I didn't understand haircutting like I understand it now. Yeah. You know, So it, you constantly have to be evolving in what you're doing and pushing yourself into things. Like a lot of people, they're like, oh, I don't like doing that, so they just don't do it. Um, so I think you really need to, like, all of this video stuff um, and the multiple cameras and all that, like, I didn't know how to do that at first, you know? I didn't know how to, I could obviously hit record on three cameras, but how do you put them together into a video, right. you know? So all that stuff you learn along the way. Um, so I, I think people out there that want to or, or even, like, even if somebody's, uh, there's a lot of people offended out there that people get, famous quicker now like it's not the same road 
to yeah. becoming a popular hairdresser anymore. Um, I think they need to to really look at the background of that person because you never know. That person could have been really working hard for a long time. Well, that was my know? whole point is that, you know, since I have known you uh, from day one, you have you practiced. You were the first person to arrive and the last person to leave. You know, you didn't care whether you had a car. You drove, you know, or, or walked yeah. on Main Street every single in the rain and the snow with shoes that had holes in it. Uh, they only had holes because I really loved those shoes. No, I know. And I said to him, <laughs> "Dude, you can't work in my in my salon." You did, and, and <laughs> I went and got those shoes redone right. and fixed. Uh, I'm like, "Dude, this is not looking good for either one of us." It was my first trip, so my first trip to Philadelphia. We were on South Street. I went yep. into this yes. shoe store, and I yep. bought these like. I don't even, they weren't even like alligator. They were just like leather shoes that went to this huge point in the right. front. They and they like elf they, shoes. Yes, yes, yeah. they did. And I loved those shoes. And I got them like, they were like 50% off because no one wanted those right. shoes. And then uh, eventually they wore holes like all the way through them. Because so you walked I know. every day and you in were the like, rain in the Matt, snow. Matt, you can't, <laughs> you can't wear <laughs> shoes with holes. Uh, uh, yeah. So I, I went to the leather guy in town and, right. I, and he fixed them for me. And then, you know, eventually I, I actually eventually ended up reaching out to that company and I was like, listen, <laughs> I'd like to have my own shoe, you know, right. and I'm I, and I'm that was before any of this. Right. Like, I'm committed. Internet. To yeah. But you, but you did, you did, pr you wanted it like you were hungry. And yeah. You, and I saw that in you, which is one of the reasons why I had to come out here to begin with. I wasn't right. going to hire somebody from out of state. Right. And, uh. But but you wanted it and you were hungry and and you and you also are really one of the kindest people I know. Oh, and, thanks. Sam. And during one of the hardest times in my life, whenever I had way too much party at the party, uh, and decided that you know I should maybe you know quit drinking for a little bit. You know, like they tried to make me go to rehab, and I said I should go, <laughs> go, go. So I went. Uh, <laughs> and you were you know kind and gracious about that, and you protected the the brand of our salon yeah. and uh, and then a couple of months later I had to go through some surgery and I had hand tremors and combs were falling over the floor and you're like yeah the combs just keep slipping all day <laughs> long today that made me cry I told that story at a hair show right after that happened it made me cry yeah I remember all that so, like it's just uh, it's crazy like how much stuff has happened For since sure. Iowa you know yeah. since that that hair show but you know I think everything that happens to somebody like the when I moved here, I had never really been away from my family at all. And I think, like, you just learn so much, you know. Like, everything that happened, whether it was good or bad, throughout that whole process of, you know, the struggles that were happening or, or any of that stuff, it was all learning, right. you know. Like, uh, you went to California. I I got to learn how to run a salon before it was even mine. You right, know, right. and and then I had Christina there who was helping me kind of learn that. And and she, you know, and in turn, she learned it. And then now when we had when we bought it, it was like it, it all we we knew what to do and what right. not to do. Well, I, and I was you thinking know? about that last night because I knew we were going to talk about this today. Like our journeys were so completely different. When I started this salon, I started this salon with no clients and a $15,000 credit card. Right. And just thought, if I put a bunch of Paul Mitchell in the window, if I build it, they'll come. Yeah. And I would sit there all day long for eight hours a day, and I'd be like, hello, gorgeous. <laughs> would right. you like a tour of the salon? Yeah. And then somebody came, and they're like, I'd like to come work for you. Will you have insurance? And I'm like, I don't know if we're going to have clients. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, just yeah. Can you sit here all day long and not get, a, you know, and not get paid? Yeah. So... Although our journeys were different in that exact same building, we both had the same hustle factor. We right. both were willing to start at 8 o'clock in the morning and stay till 8 o'clock at night. And it, it wasn't about the money or the fame or whatever. It was about our craft and how much we loved it. Yep. Uh, so if you would coach that to all of these great young people that I have the honor and privilege of, of seeing now on a daily basis, yeah. what would you say to them? Well, I mean, I think like a lot. How do I duplicate a whole bunch of mats well. all over the industry? Well, th this is the, the funny thing. Like, you you can't – here's what I've learned about the industry. F at the very beginning, I wanted to be ever everybody else, right? Like, I, I saw Robert Cromings wanted to be Robert Cromings. I saw, you know, Takashi wanted to be Takashi or DJ or whoever, right? Yeah. And then even struggling now, but over the last, like, few years, I've really um, – you know, before I go out and talk to people at every hair show, Christina, I, I'm talking to her and she's like, just be you. People like you. Yeah. So, you know, like I 
I tend to study people so much that I almost become the person. I get that. A little I bit. I get that. You know, so I think that for future professionals, I think in general, a lot of people come up at the shows and they ask, like, how do you do this? How can I do what you did? Don't do what I did. But take pieces of what I've what what we've built here, what free salon education is, or just start being you on the internet. You look at the people that are the most popular, you know, Phil does hair, super popular guy, really nice guy, guy Tang, all of those guys, they're not being anybody else. They're being themselves. Are they using techniques from other people? Yeah, probably. But their personality, the people that they genuinely are, connect to other people on the internet. For sure. So I think w w when I teach a class anywhere, I'm talking about everybody is, each person watching this right now is watching it one person on the other end. But yes. all the time when we put out content, when we're talking to people, we're talking to them like we're talking to a crowd of people, right? Yeah. So we have to stop treating it like it's a concert because this isn't a concert. What we're giving isn't a concert. It's to one person. Well, th that's the whole concept of the whole beauty industry. Yeah. The, you know, we, this is one of the last industries in the world where I get to spend 30 minutes with you. And because I change the way you look on the outside, I can change the way you feel on the inside. Yeah. But it happens one person at a time. Yeah. It doesn't happen. You know, I, I've coached forever. You know, you can't do two haircuts at the same time. Right. It happens one person at a time, one guest at a time, and one heart at a time. Yeah. Which is why I love the industry so much. Yeah. And we, you have to love people. You know, I mean, yeah, or at yeah. least like them. Yeah. You know, and then, and then like your craft. Well, and then you have like, so uh, people like the one person on the other end, you can change people without even ever seeing them. For sure. Right. So you have to realize that whatever you're saying, somebody's sucking it up and, and yes. thinking about it. And then the other thing is you have people out there that are just complaining about other people becoming popular on the Internet. Right. But all they do on the Internet is complain and all they do on the Internet is not write people back. You and, know, and that's so how can and you that's who you attract? Yeah. Exactly. So now you've become cool with people that don't write people back, right? right? But I know that having 500,000 followers or whatever, it's still possible to really communicate with a lot of those people. And forever, I would reach out to hairdressers and I'd be like, man, I really love your work. You really inspired this out of me or whatever, and never get a response because they're too busy, too cool, too whatever. And it would have meant a lot to me if somebody would have wrote back and said, you know what, I really appreciate that. But it didn't you know? stop you. No. It didn't make you no. jaded. It didn't say, you know, people are. It made me work harder. Yeah, hairdressers yeah. are, uh, you know, you still did it every single day. Just yeah. like you do with a guest every day. I'm, yep. I'm real, you know, I, I share, we're going to come up on this event at Palm Beach of the Schools. Uh, I think it's on Tuesday, Free Hug Day. Okay. Where you go out and hug people all day long. Yeah. Which I love. And my father, uh, was a hugger like he like I would walk into my house I'd be like I, you know I gotta go hug my dad <laughs> you know you know got an A on your report card hug your dad and my dad would love free hugs day but the reason why I love it is because we get to change that we get to change that energy your dad's like that yeah your dad's yeah. absolutely like that oh yeah uh, and so it, so maybe it trickles down from our family. I don't really know, but it's it's important how you treat other people. Yeah. And that shows up in your work and it shows up in your vision. And that's why perhaps, you know, as we're talking about, maybe that's why you got so many followers, just because you're nice and you attracted more nice people. Yeah. And I, I think, yeah, I think everything stems from your from your family and how you were raised and all of that. And it comes through uh, on the Internet just the same as it does in real life. You know, so I think people connect to people that are. Uh, people are looking for nice. Okay, now, but what if you, you came know? from a Jack family and you want to make the difference? So what would be? No, just uh, I think just treating people with respect, you know, yeah. like th the person on the other end, like like Sandy, who wrote, oh, my goodness, I love Sam. He's amazing. I love you, know? you Sandy. Right. <laughs> Where's so, Sandy from? Um, I don't know. Hi, Sandy. Maybe Sandy will write and let you know. But okay. and then we have Wen, who, you know, says you're doing great. My friend Adam's on here. Like it's it's all about like connecting with those yes. people. You know, like I see Sandy and like I know if Sandy keeps writing in different posts, like I remember, you know, and right. and that's where like you just got to you build your building relationships. So that is the one thing I love about Matt. He tries to reach out to everyone and makes it personal. One of the most inspiring people I've ever found. So like that's that's Christy. So Christy, like it's that connection. I, I spend a lot of my day. Not a lot of my day, but I take time out of my day to Connect. see 
the comments and really at least like it, if not right back, you know? And I look at it like, so if you guys are going through your comments and you have something that's like, oh, well, Christy, if Christy took the time to write that message, right? She takes the time to really write something out. It's not just like, oh, you're so cool. Or it's, it's, it's not that. Right. That, I like it because right. it's, it's very nice. I appreciate it. And then you got somebody that takes the time to write something to you. So you take the time to respond back. I am, I am, I have an opportunity to get better at that, although I'm really focused on it. Yeah. But I'm always on a plane. In, in my own defense, I am always on a plane. That's and the best time. But you don't, don't get the Wi Fi on the plane? No, not always. I'm kind of asleep. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, like my favorite thing is to get a window seat and I go to <laughs> sleep because whenever I get off, I have to work. That's uh, funny. So I, I always get the Wi Fi on the plane. Every single time. And that's when I do most of my responding. Well, so w I'll do it in my hotel room. I'll do it first thing in the morning. Okay. Uh, you know, I have a practice. I'm sure you know this from no, like I have listened to spa music or meditation music, whatever, my whole life while I sleep. Yeah. And I tell my nieces and nephews it's angel music. Okay. And then th as soon as I get up in the morning, the very first thing I do is I write down three things on my phone that I'm grateful for. Okay. Because I don't think that God's going to give you more blessings until you're thankful for the ones you already have. Yep. And then. And then I try to read something inspirational before my day hits me in my phone. Okay. But my favorite, t like, so now I'm getting up earlier and earlier and earlier. I know you don't know this about me, but like, I'm an old man. I get up at five o'clock. Yeah, this guy, I don't, I don't <laughs> even know this guy. I would be like, so Sam lived above the salon, right? So I would get to work and, and you came in or, uh, your schedule was like one to like oh, whatever. for sure. Right? Yeah. So I would or be 11. like. 11. 11 was my early morning. So then all of a sudden one would come and you're like. <coughs> is he okay up there? You don't know. And like, you take a broom and you just kind of like <laughs> hit the floor. I mean, you always pop down. You're always in a good mood, but it, it's funny that now you're like 6 a.m. like yeah. or earlier but guy. I, but I also go to bed at 8.30, which okay. I didn't used to do at all. Okay. Now I get to wake up. Uh, you know, I used to wake up when I was in my other life. Right. I used to wake up and say, good, you know, good God, it's morning. Right. And now I could say, good morning, God. So right. And I like, you know, I get to get up and I love being back here in Pennsylvania and have coffee and and uh, it's the only life you're going to have. I told you earlier I sold I sold all of my stuff for charity three years ago. So I'm no longer a hairdresser at all. Okay. And I wanted to work on the second half of my life as a world-class speaker, trainer, and coach. And, and part of that lifestyle is, you know, fitness and getting up early. And I get up when the sun gets up and I go to bed when the sun goes to bed. And, you know, I had all the party I needed to have at night. So yeah. now I'm going to sleep at night. Well, Cammie says that she had the pleasure of meeting you a few years ago at Palm Beach School of Fresno. Hi, Cammie. So I'm going back to Fresno in December. And there you I, go. Uh, I'm going the Friday before your Christmas party. So I'll be back in Fresno. I love He Fresno. even knows when your Christmas party. Of, <laughs> of course you know. <laughs> I'm Santa Claus. Right. Well, yeah. I know all the Christmas parties. This guy. So uh, speaking of Christmas, this is going to be the longest podcast ever. Speaking of Christmas time, I, when I worked for Sam, we would go and have to cut, we would find tree branches all over the place. Yes. And we would take those tree branches and we would paint them all white with spray paint. Yes. And then he would staple them to the entire ceiling yes. of the front of the salon. Like you were walking into like a magical a land. A wonderland. <laughs> like okay, way before Frozen was Frozen, that's yeah. what the salon looked like. The salon like. looked like Frozen. Okay, but so here's the thing. When I came here to New Hope, uh, I immediately got involved in the community and I uh, was on the board of the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. I helped bring Halloween here. Uh, we, uh, they did not do a lot for Halloween, so one of the first things we did was we put together this charity fundraiser called the Pumpkin Ball, Yeah. and where 50% of the money would go to the Susan B. Coleman Foundation, because that was our clients' females, and then the other half would go to the local AIDS foundation, Okay. A uh, fact here in, right. uh, the Lehigh or in uh, Bucks County. And, uh, and then, you know, right after Halloween, uh, October, you know, after October 31st, after we were, we're done with that pumpkin ball, November 1st, that salon turned into, into Christmas, Christmas yeah. because so hairdressers and the professional beauty industry, I think we have an opportunity to start s getting people in the Christmas mindset earlier. Right. And most hairdressers haul out the holly the second week of December, and then you put up all the gift baskets of this would be a great teacher gift or this would be a whatever. But moms have already done all their shopping. Right. So yeah. if you turn your salon into a magical Christmas place first, uh, it or, you know, you start having your Christmas displays. Yeah. Now, that said, 
decorating for Christmas is the unofficial gay sport. And <laughs> uh, <laughs> since our salon was on Main Street, in my mind, I always thought there was a contest for the best business. Right. Uh, and in my mind, I always wanted to win it. And in my mind, I believe we did. Yeah. But it was. I mean, there's no way we didn't. Right. There yeah. were hundreds of branches everywhere. Yeah. And even after the salon got flooded, we did it again. And then I didn't get enough, so I started it in October so it could be the Halloween decoration first. <laughs> and yep. then it could become. Uh, but I don't know. I lived upstairs. I had nothing to do. It was fun. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, at the time it wasn't as fun, but now that I think about it, like the, all those experiences right. and everything was really fun. Oh, and then, and d then just one last thing as a successful salon owner now. Uh, I'm sure that you send your team on a cruise every year. I take them to Vegas every year. Okay. Because so – Okay. We go. did learn something from you. Okay. Yeah. So what was that? Well, no. I mean, we just we take them to Vegas Wait. every year. Yeah. Because at, so for Christmas, what all of you guys got? What's, what's up, Ryan? So it, for Christmas, everybody got a cruise. Yeah. Now, uh, just to be really you clear. You remember Ryan Teal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's he's watching. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> uh, so just to be really clear, I, uh, I you know, the t I only had four people or five people that worked for me maximum, and I put them all down in steerage. <laughs> and it's true. It, and then they had to work their way out of that. Like, I provided the cruise, uh, and then they had to go pay $50 more to have a window or, or whatever. But the goal really was every client you're ever going to do, you're going to do the month of December. And in January is traditionally the slowest month in the entire beauty industry. So when you bookend uh, your busiest month with your slowest month, January seems so much worse. So I thought if we close the salon for a week, yeah, you you know you're only going to do 25 people in January anyhow. So if you close the salon for a week, you're going to do those 25 people. Yeah, and we got to go to a team building thing in January, and I couldn't make you guys go on vacation. So I thought if I gave you this cruise, then you would go. But I didn't want to say I need you to take a week off in January because you're only going to do 25 people. Right. Uh, so it it became you know it became a really good working thing. I for think all, all of that stuff is great. You know, like being able to be away with your team is. Yeah. It doesn't have to be as extravagant as a cruise or a Vegas or whatever. Like, frankly, it was really cheap. It, yeah, it was like cruises aren't that it's much. It's like two ninety nine or three ninety nine. Yeah, but the one year you could, uh, you got your Mountain Dew thing that you could have free Mountain Dew per week. Yeah, I know you were excited about that. Yeah, that was a good time. That's why. <laughs> I, that's why I have fake teeth now. Not, they're not all fake. Um, but all but mine are. <laughs> nice. So, um, all right. So, what else? Um, so now, so cur so Sam Sam was in the <coughs> industry for uh, before I met you. You were doing all kinds of stuff. You were a platform artist for Paul Mitchell. You're a motivational speaker. Yep. Um, so you had a couple CDs out when I met you. Yep. And um, which w was okay. The first one was Sam Poo, Your Way to Success. Yes. Right. And then the next one was Cliff Diving when I first moved. Yes. So Sam Poo, Your Way to Success was how to become a hundred thousand dollar year hairdresser. Mm -hmm. It was uh, I don't know, like that was unheard of back then, and it was a cassette. Don't make fun of me. <laughs> it was a cassette. Yeah, back you know, back in the day, if I loved you, I would make you a mixtape on a cassette. Yeah. Uh, and then it, it it went really well. It just I I just made it just to share ideas. I I was I've never been in this industry for money. I've been in it to just share ideas because yeah. I'm, I'm a high school dropout that got that was in a tiny little town that got blessed to have a job that travels all over, and I just wanted to record it and be like, here's yeah. what I know. Well, but you know now, so I I saw. And we were out, I forget, maybe a year ago, but this band had a cassette tape. They were selling it. Oh, right. and But inside the cassette tape, so you could listen to the cassette tape, but inside was a download code for oh, the thing. Oh, so I thought sweet. that was cool. So that's if you have sweet. any of those old Sampoo... Uh, no, they're done. They're okay, done. all they're right. Done. I'm sure we lost them in the flood. Yeah, uh, I'm sure. So then the second CD I recorded was called Cliff Diving, A Journey of New Hope. Yeah. And it was about opening up a salon with no clients. And you're in it. There's even a quote from you on it. Yeah. And then uh, and then everyone's like, you know, when are you coming out with a CD or when are you going to come out with a whatever? And y you can't have life experiences unless you live them. Right. So yeah. then after I got sober, I thought, well, the whole world looked different. Yeah. Whenever he got sober, so I recorded a, my third one called "Sampoo Rinse Repeat." Okay. Which is that? See, one. I thought this was the same. I thought this no, was no, the no. other this sampoo. Is, this is okay. "Sampoo Rinse Repeat." Okay. Get it? Got it. All right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and uh, 
and and it's really it was all about what I did with the salon, what I learned being a Robert Cromine salon, a little bit about digital marketing because I'm an old guy. I'm uh, 16, 17 years older than you, 20 years older than you, something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Yeah, we'll go with that. Not really sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, I'm getting younger every year. <laughs> <laughs> We're meeting uh, each other. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Uh, eventually, we'll both be 40. Yeah. At any rate, so I, I recorded that. And then uh, I also had the really good fortune of working with uh, Paul Mitchell, uh, launching our men's product line a yeah. couple years ago. So then I recorded and I wrote and researched all the stuff about the men's market. Okay. So then I recorded another CD called Priority Mail. And it's just all about the men's grooming industry and about how men think differently and all of that. I, once again, I don't record any stuff to make any money off of it. It's on iTunes. You can get on my website. Yeah. I bring CDs to future professionals. But I am a big believer in turning your car into a learning center. Just like you coached me that maybe I can do a little bit more on an airplane. Yeah. We absolutely can do more in our cars. Right. And whether it's your podcast or whether it's the Joel Olstein radio station or whatever it is, there's only so many times you can listen to that Adele song. Yeah. So why not listen to people that are smarter than you, brighter than you, particularly on days you go to work. Right. So my my feeling is, you know, Wynn Claywell, who's my coach, says you should only work out on days you want to feel good. Uh, so I'm... I'm trying to work out <laughs> and, and get buff and big. Uh, but I think that you should only listen to something that motivates or inspires you. Yeah. Because you want to be motivated and inspired. Yeah. So if you don't want to be motivated and inspired today, that's cool. Uh, so maybe I listen to your podcast. And it doesn't have to be all day. So my recommendation is 15 minutes a day. Because uh, sometimes you need a coach. You need a, I got a feeling. Right. And to get another good idea. And then... Go work, listen to something for 15 minutes, work really, really, really hard, and then on your way home, pop that out and spend five minutes listening to something that has no lyrics to it so that you can decompress your day and that you don't come home and you're not mean mommy. Right. And you don't come home and wait till I tell you what happened at work today. That you can uh, just let everything go away. So I've done that practice my whole life. I That's a good idea. I get up and I listen to something that motivates me in the morning and then you work and do whatever your work is, whether it it's a hairdresser, a professional service provider, whatever. And then on your way home, pop that out. And just for five minutes, just one song, listen to something that has no lyrics. So your day can run through your head. Yeah. And you can let it go. Right. Uh, and uh, I don't. it's a best practice of mine, so I share it with other people. Uh, so that's really the purpose of the CDs. I'll probably move more into podcasts. Eventually, yeah. there's a book in me you know, that yeah. I've got to do. Yeah. <laughs> It'll, and it'll end up being a book on tape, you know, because that's yeah. how, I mean, yeah. that is literally, uh, no one has time to read books anymore. Everybody's book on uh, I don't, tape, I, you know, and and everybody, and like you said, you know, they're only playing five songs on the radio anymore. Right. I mean, it's always been like that, but there was never this many options. So right. now people are choosing, like, I don't, I never listen to music really ever anymore. I listen to people talking because when I have a moment to, to, capture more information or learn something want i want to learn something right. and i want to i want to get uh, people want value out of every moment of their life yes. now it's no longer like music used to be an escape or whatever and people got value from it because i think it, it brought emotion yes. but now there's so many options out there that now i i choose to listen to podcasts or um audiobooks i haven't gotten into a little bit but i know brian uh who has a longer drive drives 40 minutes to get yeah. here for work yeah he listen he's listening to audiobooks all the time so people don't have have as much time to read i'm not saying people don't read but um it's definitely moving in that direction and if anybody like we were talking about with you like all this stuff on a podcast would be great you know and this like people will watch the video but mostly they'll listen to it yeah. in a car okay you know? good because i didn't really <laughs> because when you said to me yesterday we were doing a podcast I yeah thought, well then for the first time in my life i'm not going to wear black yeah and i <laughs> think he walked in here and he was like oh yeah, yeah. so uh, no so then you're like putting all the cameras together and stuff and i thought i don't really know what's <laughs> going on <laughs> and uh and i'm like I, I would not have worn this white shirt yeah but uh, no, everything's video with me. So, <laughs> so you gotta come dressed. Okay. So now, so so now I am here. One of the other reasons why I wanted to come here. Yeah. Is you uh, sold the salon? That yes. Was, that was, that our, was Hello Gorgeous, that and then became and Salon then, Gratitude, yep. and was a fixture on North Main Street. Yep. What did we decide for seventeen years? Yeah. No, I'm totally lying. Did I? I opened up in two thousand. Well, oh, when no. it, yeah, it would be seventeen oh, years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah crazy wow. yeah how's that possible i'm only 35 <laughs> uh so 
it was a fixture on yeah. Main Street for 17 years, mm-hmm. and now you're in this amazing, uh, gorgeous. I can't even tell you how beautiful this place is. Like I, I can't. Wanted to, I wanted to just like cry a little bit this morning when I came in because I, I if I could wish something for any human being in the world, it would be for you. Oh, thanks. And uh, this building is how many square feet is it? Four thousand. Four thousand square feet. And our salon was 750 mm-hmm. maximum. Yeah. <laughs> and we did all the video, all the stuff we did out of that. You did. Yeah. I mean, you really max- you maximized the crap out of that. Yeah. I mean, that was a sure. transformer. Like, yeah, it would, it would sure. go from, I mean, we had, like, the white backdrop hanging on a random wall that we could just pull it down, move the stations yeah. out, film. And, you know, it, that, that's what I want people to know. Like, you can start it anywhere. Like, yeah. you don't have to have. Now, Later, like n- it became a necessity that we needed more space to create, and we also now are doing video shoots with with ma- manufacturers and stuff, so it's different. But when we started it, it was you know I started it on an iPad. Well, I r- I remember you saying to me when I was out in California, I want to start this company called Free Salon Education, yeah, and I just want to give out, I just want to do free videos, yeah, and. Uh, I think your goal then was to uh, maybe reach 10,000 people. I don't remember exactly. Yeah, what I mean, you said. I didn't really have like a person amount. I wanted a free pair of scissors, so I was working right. towards that. I so the first company I reached out to was Mizutani Scissors, and you know, they said to me, "Yeah, I'll send you a pair of scissors to show them on the internet." And we only I mean, we didn't have a lot of followers then, and they uh but they were really cool, you know. They were just like take a picture with them and that would be awesome. I mean, we did have a good amount of followers and a lot of content to back it up, so you can't just like reach out and get free things right away. But start making stuff, and you can. And then w- now we're the w- one of the number one sellers of Mizutani scissors in the United States. I you know, so I it starts with that one little thing. Then it branched off to working with all these companies, and we build our online store, and w- you know, and we have great sponsors like Olaplex and Paul Mitchell, and uh, you know, and Bricado and a few different companies and minerva beauty so it's just you know that it all became a company okay but this place is unbelievable <laughs> so, like, so you know when i came in i'm like i don't know what door to come in and uh th- it's a beautiful yeah our clients uh, are still getting used because they went from 750 square feet with the tiniest like airport bathroom yeah. like airplane bathroom <laughs> oh, <for sure>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah to now you know three big bathrooms right. And they're like they're walking around. They can't find what door to go in. They finally right. get find the door and they walk in. And you know, it's just I love seeing me and Christina like literally all week have just been like high fiving, just like that moment when what we've wanted the place to feel like. Yeah. And you know, we took this space over in April, so it's been like we've been paying for both, and it's like you know been pretty crazy and building this. And you know, we basically did everything ourselves in here i get that you know the I only thing we hired somebody to do was to paint and obviously do the plumbing work but other than that we we did everything and it was you know and now to see it it's not done but it's you it know it's great it's i saw done the beautiful enough. color bar that you told me christina put together yeah. from ikea yeah like, i'm all for it like ikea should sponsor matt beck <laughs> uh we you know uh, every salon should do ikea yeah ikea is great and it's not expensive so when you you know we built that whole color bar i think we paid probably we paid like three grand for the color bar because it was a full kitchen basically but but it's a full kitchen for three grand and then christina put it together i had a broken foot (laughs) i was like we should hire somebody did you get the broken foot before she was putting it together like was your intention to do my intention was never to put it together and then you're like all of a sudden i have a broken foot there's one (laughs) difference between me and christina christina will is so like just like she's very um like she just doesn't want she wants to do it like she right. wants to like so She's she very hands on once yes you do it and, and be a part so of she took and I, I didn't even give you that part of the tour but even some of that ikea stuff she sanded down like the handles and everything painted really? them gold like they don't come in gold wow so she did that and then like minerva's we got these mirrors from minerva that are hanging from the ceiling and they were dark Which wood are beautiful by the way. they were dark wood with black trim and she sanded them in the front and then painted the trim gold. Oh, I didn't know that. So when you yeah. said when you said Christina did this, I just thought she got those mirrors. No. And it was like a process. like she went through and like really wow. worked through it. Yeah. So you know, it's it's it probably even more her in that building than me. And it's just like and I love it because forever it's been Matt the salon owner guy, right. but it's really not Matt the salon owner guy. It's Matt the guy that you see on video and you see, but Christina's like 
But that's the best you know? part of owning a business. Is yeah. Creating. It's like whenever you move, like yeah. you want to, you want to create everything and make it yours. And yeah, it's one of the reasons why I decorated that salon. Like I lived upstairs, so we got to keep evolving it all the time. It's right. It's the best. It is. It's the best process. It's not always about. Yeah. And it's one of the, it's one of the few rewarding things. Yeah. As a salon owner, that you get to put your heart and your creativity, and yep. there's a lot of rewarding things about being a salon owner. But right. But that heart that extends your client space that way. Yeah. And we have, you know, we've had the same team for for so long. So we got Brian, Thad, and Drea. And How have you kept them so long? What's the secret um, to that? You know what? I think. I mean, let's see if they show up today. I, I think they, <laughs> you know, they. We uh, had them forever until today. <laughs> they, first off, they're they're very dedicated, you know, and and I think what I try to prove every day, and that even got a little bit harder because we were so separated. So for like the last year building this place, we've been here, they've been there. Yeah. It became actually kind of weird. You know, like yeah. um, I think a lot of salon owners that are absent will will understand, and even some that are there but not really present will understand. Like you lose your staff. No, you, you know? have to be. You have you to. You have to. You have to be present, to, to, or you have to be present to play. Or you yeah. You, you have to be present in your business. Yeah. So we weren't that present because we were building this, which they gave us a little leeway because they knew we yeah. were building this. But they, um, but you know, it, so w over the last week, I feel like the connection's coming back. You know, cool. that that feeling. But they've been with us for five, six years. They have great clientele. You know, they they my big thing and Christina's thing was our average clients paying about three hundred, three hundred fifty dollars. Wow. And they were paying it in that tiny in that tiny salon, space yeah. that was full of hair, like uh, 17 years of hair, you know, right. like you can't make with it. With the bathroom door yeah. that also led to the basement. Yeah. And we were going to do like a full makeover of that building when this building came open. So then we didn't do it, and it needed a makeover. So, yeah. like, you know, we were really lucky because Minerva sent us some furniture for that place, and we, you know, got to clean it up a little bit. Well, the furniture is the – the Minerva furniture here is beautiful. Well, thanks. Like, I, the first thing I did when you took me to the wash house, I'm like – You laid in I, it, I, yeah. I, yeah, I want to have my RGF food <laughs> in this bowl. <laughs> yeah. and it's beautiful. Yeah, it's really awesome. And, and our staff, because we did all white shampoo yeah. bowls. Like, the, even the chair is white, and everybody was like, what is wrong with you? And I'm like, I don't – it, you see every hair on that chair. So, like, you will clean that. And we had black ones before, and you didn't see the hair, and now all of a sudden it's built up with hair everywhere. So, like... Okay, wait, so what's your system going to be? Because even in my social media, I hear people talk about, yeah. what do you do about white chairs? So what's the system going to well, be? Well, you know, we have Magic Eraser, so I'm hoping that that's... You know, we're only a week in, so okay. I'll, this would be a better six-month update, okay. but well, our, okay, but our you, plan... You plan is you have a Magic Eraser. Yes, so our plan is it will never... This place will never, ever look like... It will not get to the point of the other place. The other place, I wasn't... Um, it went through so many different types of employees over 17 years yeah. and you know sometimes when something gets too it's probably like a hoarder like you know you get so much stuff and so right. much hair or whatever and then it becomes overwhelming and you can't do it so we have very strict systems okay, now but, but that said matt yeah I, I you know i have been to salon gratitude uh many times i've been to new hope many times when when you didn't even know i was here look, th that salon is not filled with hair i don't want people to feel right like it was a it's a very clean salon yeah it is a very meticulously clean salon but it is a 200 year old building exactly so right this is a modern new fresh building but there was nothing about it that was dirty well or that's good to know or had hair you, yeah. or it, whether i had it or whether you had it right it was just a, a we see like when you're in it every day you see all right. those things but when you have a but whether you have a 750 square foot salon or whether you have a 4,000 square foot salon which you currently have yeah you need to have a system yeah and the system it like we had the system where you swept up the hair before you did the blow dryer so hair didn't go everywhere yeah you know we had the floors refinished yep you know whenever you know you know, it, uh, you know, it's cleanliness is important to, to clients. Yeah. So that said, what's your white furniture? You're gonna have magic erasers. And so then the white furniture we have magic erasers, and we're just very careful with the way that color is being, you know, so rinsed you or whatever. Do you have a system of how you're gonna drape? So we are. N so the drapes, um, you have to check. You have to check the drapes before they lay back. Like obviously, you have you can't have color on your. They can't be fully balayaged or pulled through a low light and then lay back on the, the sink. So, that so will everyone's be the very system. aware of it. Yeah, I think it was just for us, the great thing about us is that we are four people right. in this place, like four hairdressers working in there. So, and they're very aware that they're white 
chairs and they look nice right now. Yeah. So it w it's more their concern for getting anything on there. And then, so my worry is once a couple things get on there, then what happens? Yeah, that's so the phone call that I went. That's the I six <laughs> month conversation. Yeah, I went the phone call of whenever uh, the April 3rd conversation when you go <laughs> to work and you're like, what happened? I know, because right now I'm like, so I, we have a system where everything gets swept at the end of the night, like the full place, right? Yeah. And then not just your station. And then I got like a vacuum, a, a cordless vacuum yeah. to then go around and do another lap to get okay. the hair. So when I walk in and I see like three hairs on the floor, I'm like, what are those three hairs doing there? Yeah. yeah. Who's <laughs> responsible for the three hairs? <laughs> I don't and there's know. only four people there that work here. Yeah, so, so it's got to be right. one. But that's the thing, like, so, uh, you know, it, it's just, it's really fun. My mom says hi. She's on here. Oh, hi. So. And I'm going to get out my uh, my Christmas tree skirt really soon. I know. My mom hasn't even seen this place yet. I mean, she's seen pictures. It's really I gotta, beautiful. Got to get her it. here. And how's your sister? Um, My sister is great. Great. Yes. She's uh, she's good. She's actually, um, she's growing up, you know, like know. she's, you met her, she was 15. When she was Sarah, <laughs> smile, because <laughs> right. I just wanted her to smile I all think the that's time. still her name on one of the social media things or something, but yeah, yeah, she's good. My brother lives back there now. Oh, cool. So, yeah, so everybody. And your dad's good. My dad's good as well. Yeah. Your dad, so I, you know, I'm out here also with my mom, mm -hmm. and she needs a little bit of handyman stuff here, and I'm like, I need a Dave Beck. I know. Like, I just need a Dave Beck to come here and like do like a, a wall plate and, you know, yeah. mount a broom. We needed Dave Beck when we were putting the lights up because right, well where's the Dave Beck? Where uh, is Dave I Beck? I FaceTime my dad and I'm like, so look at these wires. <laughs> and then as I'm doing it, I have the wire, like the electric tester to put up these oh these lights. God. And I put it on there and it, it fires <coughs> up like like this like shock. And he goes, What did you do? I'm like, I don't know. I need Your you here. God has, sa has saved me out of so many yeah. catastrophes and car scrapes and god bless your dad yeah your dad can fix anything and he really can with five tools and if he doesn't and this is what i think like i always took from my dad because my dad was always the person that said like tell me i can't do something and i'll prove you right. wrong so you know i think i i learned from my dad like if you don't know how to do it you just learn how right. to do it and then you don't have to worry about it anymore and so like yes yeah. He's a crazy karaoke singer, like amazing good. <laughs> yes. This is where Matt got this from. <laughs> amazing good. I'm uh, not amazing good, but my dad, he's a he's a strong Alice Cooper. No, for sure, yeah, yeah. for sure. So, all right. So, um, okay. So you're so you're here at this thing. Mm -hmm. that, so now we're fast forward, and you're now uh, free salon education and this four thousand square foot salon. Yeah. And I am no longer a hairdresser. Right. <laughs> yep. Uh, I, I feel like that, um, I don't know, somebody said to me a couple of years ago, why'd you quit doing hair? And I feel like after 52,000 haircuts, I'm allowed to quit. Yeah. I figured it out on a really long plane ride when I should have been responding to the text. Yeah. Uh, and I and I don't think anybody is better at becoming now a, a, a life coach or a client coach or a business coach than a hairdresser that's been through all of these different uh evolutions maybe right so now uh you know the other day i uh, was at this uh celebrity event for the schools and mary wilson from the supremes was in the elevator and one of the things that i coach all the future professionals is come up with your elevator speech okay and uh and so you know come up with your elevator speech and make your social media the same across all of your social media platforms yeah so i, I get in the elevator i'm like this can't possibly be mary wilson because but you know i'm like so what am i going to say so i'm like are, <laughs> are you going to the gala and she said and this man says, well, this is Mary Wilson. I'm like, oh, no, I know who you are. <laughs> I, I've read your book. You know, I've sang your songs. I loved when you sang a song for you in the red dress. Uh, and she said, well, who are you? And I said, well, uh, are you a hairdresser? And I said, I used to be a hairdresser, but my name is Sam Burns, and I'm a world-class speaker, trainer, and coach. Okay. And you can find me at Sam Burns Biz across all of my social media. <laughs> so she grabs my arm and goes, well, okay, Sam Burns Biz. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the gala. So I'm walking in now, and I'm like, well, we raised $18.5 million. And I'm thinking in my head, I have, I'm have i walking in here with a Supreme. Yeah. But the point is, I had an elevator speech ready. Yeah. You know, at the ready. That's the so, truth, yeah. So when you, uh, so what I want to say to all of your listeners is practice your elevator speech right now. So when you're in the elevator with Mary Wilson or whoever, you know, my social media is the same everywhere. I'm yeah. Sam Burns Biz everywhere. Yeah. 
And I have a real quick, I'm a world-class speaker, trainer, and coach. And you can find me at Sam Burns Biz everywhere. And then the elevator door can open. Yep. So my call to action to you and all of your people would be figure out what your elevator speech is going to be today in 20 seconds or less. Nice. So what would yours be? Well, so I actually, the other, so I flew to San Antonio last weekend. I love San Antonio. So I get, yeah, it's really nice. So I, uh, I get, get ready to get on the plane. I was running late, of course. So I'm like getting through the airport and I get to my seat. I'm, I'm in the front row of the plane and I go to, I walk right in and I look down and Wait, let's not, let's not, you were in the front row, meaning you were in first class. Well, so I was in, okay. it doesn't matter. I know, but I just want to know. I was just the, in the first I, row. I just want to know that the boy that, that, that was that <laughs> never been in a hotel before, just now he's in the front row. Just to process that in your head. Yeah. Keep so going. as soon as I walk in, I'm like, excuse me, ma'am, my seat's right there. And it was Tabitha. No so, way. So my whole flight to San Antonio, <laughs> I'm sitting next to Tabitha, and and we had actually I did an interview with her say, a couple years ago. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, I don't know if you remember, uh, but I did an interview with you. She goes, I thought you looked familiar. So then she's, we started talking about free salon education, and I showed her pictures of the salon because I'm like, we just opened it and everything, and uh, it was just really cool. We 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 ate like you know some weird pretzel burger yeah. like whatever yeah. i'm like well, this is interesting you know but um it was it was all that stuff like where a long time ago like i would get up to let's say go to talk to robert cromings or something yeah. and i remember like like you would say to me go get him a, a, a belvedere on the rocks or something and i would take the drink over and or, I'd be like, or an americano <laughs> with two glass <laughs> two oh, cups is it different now yeah, either, either. so keep quiet <laughs> so um so i would walk up and i'm like here you go, you know, <laughs> and like I just think about it. and and this is one thing that I have learned over over the years is that the more you know, like the more confident you get, you get confidence from from learning. Right. Yeah. And just being uh, not necessarily around people, but being more comfortable with yourself. Yeah. And like I said before, for a long time, I tried. I just wanted to be what other people were. And now I'm learning that what I'm doing, what I, I'm I feel good about it, you know, and like I feel like uh, when I get up and speak about social media or whatever, I can because I built a company on social media. Right. You know, there's a lot of people out there pretending to build things. You can only and teach what you know. Like I, yeah. uh, you know, I only teach uh, service providers or people that are in the, the people business. I right. Don't, you know, I, I don't teach computer programmers. I don't know right. anything about it. Yeah. Uh, but if you are in, I if you work with people and you, uh, and people are part of your product, yep. whether it's in the hotel industry or real estate or education or yeah. uh, then if you work with people, then I can help you. I can coach you P and uh, and you teach what you know. And, and, you, and that's where you get to be your authentic self. Right. You know, I'm not going to teach Oprah's book club. I'm not a reader, but I can teach you how to make people feel great. Right. And I can teach you how to make people feel valued and I can teach you how to make people come back to your business. Right. And, and a little more quality life. And that's what you're good at, you know? Like, I remember um, just watching when the first time I saw you speak. It wasn't, it wasn't even ever really about the haircut, you know? No, it's about people. And it's how salons work, too. Like, a lot of people think, you know, I'm going to be successful if I learn to do this haircut really well. Yeah. But that has nothing to do with it. Like, I've seen people, uh, like... I tell this story all the time, but I watched somebody put a touch up on and then do the haircut while the touch up was on so that really? I, I know You've it's crazy. Seen I've seen this happen. They did did the haircut while the touch up was on and was the most booked hairdresser I've probably ever seen. Oh, I, I did not think that was going to be the second half of that. That story is the second half. half because they put on they they had the best relationship with their clients. It didn't matter okay. what they did. Now, I'm not saying do that. I'm going to I'm going to process that a little yeah. bit. But the most okay, but so, all right. I, I'm going to process that a little bit because that's so foreign to the fifty-two thousand haircuts I've done in my lifetime. Yep. Uh, I have done a color and done somebody else's haircut. Right. But I've not cut. Put the touch up on you know, and then I've cut it. I've never done right. that. But the industry is changing. It's <laughs> not this. This I saw five years ago, okay. uh, maybe even longer. I've never seen it again. Okay. But but the reality of the story is, he was very booked. This person. Okay. So, 
It, it was it's unbelievable, why and that's we, where why I, did we bring that up to tell people to do that or not to do that? Well, the, don't do that. But but right. why I bring it up is you you'll be successful in this business based on relationships, oh, yes, not sure. on sure. not necessarily on talent alone. And that's where you're seeing people that are becoming popular on the internet because of the relationships they're building on the internet, not the talent that they necessarily have. Now, if you take talent and put it together with building relationships, now you can become what I would say is Guy Tang. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's the most popular in San Antonio. He sold, it was $20 a ticket for 3,000 people only. That was the max the tickets that could wow. be sold. And they were waiting out the door to buy those tickets. Wow. And he had, uh, at his booth, you know, he had people wrapped around the whole hair show to take a selfie with him. And, you know, it's just, and people, some people are frustrated with that. Some people aren't. I'm not frustrated with it. I'm fascinated by it. I think that, he, if you watch him, is himself. He talks to people. He treats people like they're, you know, on the same level because they are. Because we're all hairdressers we're when all it comes people. out. Exactly. We are, we are spiritual beings having a human existence. You just need to be nice to people. And if yep. you're nice, I had this conversation with somebody the other day about religion. I'm like, it's not about, like, just take all of them and put them all together. And it's like this. Like, don't be nice. Yeah. Don't steal. Don't yeah. covet your neighbor's wife. Right. And just be nice. Right. And if you're nice and you're, and you're forward focused and you, and you do the best that you can, then, then good things will happen. And uh, I don't know. I think that that's my – it's been my philosophy in my businesses. It's been my philosophy in my life. That's it. And so that's what I'm doing the second half of my life. I'm just going to train people to be nice and coach and still help a lot of service providers. I, lo I love – you know, hairdressers are my people. Yeah. They always have been. And I want every salon owner to be successful. And because I've done – uh, we have this thing called the Tree of Opportunity at Paul Machula Schools, and it's like all the different things you can do with your license. Yeah. And I'm and I've done every every single thing on that branch, every every everything there is to do except for one. Yeah. I've not done hair at funeral homes, and I'm never going to do hair at funeral homes. It's not. I my can't jam. see you doing that. Yeah. No. Uh, your clients never come back. You don't even watch scary movies. No, I don't. I don't. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, 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 I was going to say your clients don't come back because you don't want them to come back or, or <laughs> you want right. to come back in your dreams. Ah, <laughs> I hated my hair. <laughs> so, no, I don't watch scary movies. Or, you know, garbage in, garbage out. Right. So uh, that's what I'm going to do for the second half of my life. What are you going to do? So, I mean, for me, I, I'm just going to keep moving and doing, creating content, you know. Like, I, I love what I do now. I don't, I work with great companies. I, you know, I don't have to, I travel if I want to travel. Like I'm doing shows and I'm speaking about things that I love. And, you know, now I, uh, Christina and I have this beautiful place where we never want to leave, you know? Oh so, God. um, we have, I'm going to be doing more a cat like workshops here. Um, so when I do haircutting workshops, I don't like to travel and do them anymore. Yeah. I'd rather do them in my home. Oh my goodness. And so it's such a beautiful space. So we're doing them in there. Like we have one in November and then, and I bought all like, uh, pivot point tripods for everybody just so that everybody because right. my thing was every show you go to everything you do it, it, it's always skimped on like right. they buy the cheapest mannequin the cheapest stands right. like all this stuff and i i don't like traveling and being in those because i wouldn't want to be in it in my life well, it's like you're not going to go go do a hair show or a haircut and that someone's going to be like well here's the ten dollar scissors yeah to go right so exactly I so i like them all, we all have the same equipment same you know and and we get to hang out at where where all of this is. And so you're gonna do it here. Yeah. So we're doing it here um, in the salon. Uh, you know, all those chairs. That's why it's very simplified, and you know, it can right. be around there. And it's very limited tickets. Well, so Bucks County. I mean, for for those of you guys that have never been to Bucks County, Pennsylvania, it really is one of the most beautiful places on earth. And and I know that as a man that is always on an airplane. I was at 55 uh, different uh, schools this year, and. Uh, uh, over like 65 or 70 s different cities for different reasons. Right. So I've been all over this country. And, and that was just last year. Uh, Bucks County is beautiful. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to settle here. And this particular great space that you have in this great wooded, peaceful, tucked away area that's like a, a sanctuary safe haven is will be such a retreat for anybody that wants that's to come here. That's what I think, too, yeah. And it's surrounded by trees. Yeah, we're in the woods. It, yeah, it yeah. smells great. Uh, I mean, you're in the woods, but right there's the road. Like right, it's yeah. It's not like you're yeah. driving through, you know. Yeah, exactly. It's paved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's it. I'm going to keep doing that and keep making 
haircutting videos and you know in filming with people like i love these kind of conversations this is this is a really fun one for me because i mean my big message would be that you nobody can do anything on their own in their life right for sure. so if my mom you know didn't my mom and dad didn't buy me a ticket to go see a, a hair show or to meet i wouldn't have met you if i didn't meet you i wouldn't be in new hope and I wouldn't have had the opportunities that I had. You introduced me to everyone. It was like, y I had you, there would be people you would introduce me to that were like, could care less who, who I, like you would introduce me to every single person throughout Paul Mitchell and everything. So the connections I made through that and like being able to buy your salon and then Christina, you know, I wouldn't have met Christina. Right. You know, right. I wouldn't have the family that I have. You would have the and amazing son that you have. And I, you know, my son. And so it's just, it, life happens when you work towards what, uh, you get what you work towards, I right. think. And, but you can't do it on your own. I, I wouldn't have this salon without Christina, you know. And um, it, when we decided to buy it, it was like, she had to be on board. You know, it wouldn't have right. been, it couldn't have just been my thing and I take it over and right. then all of a sudden, you know, I, because I travel, you traveled, you were right. traveling every weekend, you know, yeah. so you'd be away, I'd be working in the salon. Right. And the same thing with me, I was on, I was driving everywhere. Right. I mean, I, w when I was doing 75 classes a year, I wasn't flying all over the country. I was in my car driving. Right. So, you know, nothing happened. Everybody sees the face and they think, you know, that's like without the team I have, without people actually doing hair for six years and building a clientele, like, you know, you got to surround yourself with people that push you. you know? Well, and, and I want to say to you, uh, not that I wanted to make this this big love fest thing, but I want to say to you uh, that during one, you always supported my vision. I always knew that I could count on you, whether you were my assistant and then became my number one hairdresser and then became uh, the co-owner and then or, or whatever and then yeah. the owner. Uh, but you uh, always stood by my side. You stood by my side when I was the best that I could be, but more importantly, you stood by my side when I was at my worst. And not a lot of people, you know, New Hope, Pennsylvania for me is the epicenter of, of where I created some really greatness parts and was also one of the lowest parts of my life where yeah. I clearly just had too much party at the party and I made a decision that I, 11 years ago, that I was gonna quit drinking and, and doing drugs. Uh, and you stood by me through that. You were there in the, uh, in the worst of that, you were there after, you didn't give up on me, you, you felt that uh, you had confidence in me when I didn't have confidence in myself, and I thank you for that. Well, you had the same for me, though, that's the whole thing, you know, I, when I first met you, you didn't have to do anything, you know, so that's, when I came out here, I experienced a lot more things than I ever thought I would in my life. I was in a very small town in Illinois. Yeah. And, and so I know that because <laughs> I shared many of them with you. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, I, uh, um, you know, this, obviously this podcast can go on forever, but we, we just had such, so many things. I was yeah. even telling a story at my class uh, last weekend about how we used to go to, bi to bars to hand out business cards. Yes. And oh my, that would, no, that was part of our routine. If you didn't have any yeah. clients tomorrow. All right, I'll yeah. say one thing and then we'll stop it. All right. So uh, I made a commitment that we were going to own the, the local sexy bar <laughs> uh, in the town. Like right. whatever it is. Yeah. And if you're not a drinker, then don't own the bar. But, you know, it was a good idea because bartenders and waiters and waitresses get up and do their hair every single day and they talk or interact with what do you think 100 people an hour 200 people an hour right so don't you want them saying sam from hello gorgeous or matt from salon gratitude does my hair right so i know we went after this one particular girl her name is linda uh who was just the hottest hawaiian in my opinion like the hawaiian tropic girl right. of, of the town and i wanted to own her as my client and I would go there every single night around uh, 4.30 because I knew she was slow then because 5 o'clock would be busy happy hour time. And I'm like, I'd really like to do your hair. And she's like, I have a hairdresser. Right. And I'm like, well, when your hairdresser dies, breaks her leg, moves away, here's my card. I ha have Hello Gorgeous right up the street. And then I'd go back the next day. She's like, I have a hairdresser. And then we sent a gift basket. And, you know, she'd try the product. Right. And I just worked her and worked her and worked her forever for like six months. And then finally... I had come back from doing uh, something down in Miami for the Versace show. Yeah. And I said to her, 
oh, I just came back from Miami, and I'd love to do the Versace blow dry for you. And she went, the Versace blow dry? <laughs> I want the Versace blow dry. And then we, she became my personal number one client. Like, yeah, spent she a came lot, in every a week. Lot. Yeah. Fridays and Saturdays, and bought every yeah. tool, every product. When we started selling hair, she bought hair. Yeah, she was a great advertisement for me. Yeah, whether you know, and and be, and she also, when they got new employees, said you needed to come to the salon. So you got to find that one or two people that are going to talk about you because right. your friends on Facebook are sick of you. So you got to find somebody else. Yeah, and then we also had a strategy that if you weren't busy, we were going to go as a group the next day in nice outfits loaded with business cards and maybe a product under my blazer. <laughs> uh, and they're like, are you guys in a rock band? No, we're at the salon up the street. What would you do to my hair? And, yeah. and oh, and I happen to have a product. It was all pre-rehearsed, right. but we we had the products in the in the re ladies' restroom yep. that said this, said this salon. Right. So think about like, so this is what I talk about, because think about all that, all that stuff, all that effort, all that time, like everything you had to do. Now, you can literally have the most beautiful picture, beautiful work, maybe a video image of somebody's hair that you did, and you can take it to Facebook, and you can pay $5, and you can circle New Hope and Lamberville or the, whatever your area is, and hit every single person that looks through that feed, their feed, with your beautiful work, advertising it, and, and do all that for $5. Really? <laughs> yeah, I, no, yeah. I, I was like, you know, we did not have Facebook when I opened up. Exactly, this salon that's what I'm saying. Ago. So you're trucking down Main Street, you're trying to hand out cards to everybody, and now literally for five dollars, you can reach three thousand people in a well, diameter of an area. I done it. Of course. So and but the thing is, a lot of people are doing it wrong because they're doing it while they're posting like, right now our salon's not busy. Let's say if our salon's not busy, now I'm at frantic. And right. now I'm just posting on, I'm, I'm throwing up all over Facebook saying, oh, I need clients, I right. need clients. Come in right now. No, it's not that. You got to post your beautiful work, right. show off so that your salon looks better than right. every salon in your area and circle that diameter and make sure that everybody's news feed is filled with your stuff. Okay, but that said, yeah. don't ever discount the idea of a one-on-one. One-on-one, -on -one, yep. uh, yeah. Going with your team and dressing up for five minutes into the yeah. local coffee shop whatever so you can meet this is still a people yeah. business and an app or a photograph or a phone is never going to take the place of interaction that no we're going to have one not at all one. so yeah. it's got to be a combination of both uh -huh. it's got to be heart to heart and head to head and make women feel great about themselves and then they're going to want to spend time with you yeah for sure of course yep so, so I, i'm glad i got to spend time with you today i know this was fun we were supposed to be done uh, a long time ago. A long time ago. <laughs> I thought that I'm cleaning out the old salon today before I go to Charlotte. And I am so. leaving before Matt says, come with me to the old salon because I'm <laughs> sure there's stuff in the basement that you left there. Well, so. I actually, so I, I used that company, 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Yeah. Because I was like, I got a lot of junk. Are there down still here. a lot of tree branches in the basement? No, the tree branches had been brought out, but the but there was a lot. And the, the big one Easter thing, basket? No, that was all out too. <laughs> The one thing that I saw come up that reminded me of you that was you is the disco ball came out. Oh my through God. And he's like carrying like all this stuff. And I saw the disco ball going. I was like, ah, oh, memories. Okay. But just to, before <laughs> we close, the, my goal was, uh, we had a disco ball way in the back of the salon. Yes. And which we sh was shot so that it would stream through the glass in the front of the salon and catch your eye as you were walking by. Yeah. That was the whole idea behind the disco ball. Because how often do you walk down a street anywhere and you just never look in someone's window? Yeah. So we had the disco ball. We had the vi the television screens in the window with the speaker outside. So yeah. It was always loops. So you know, what's your salon look like when it's awake? So exactly. That, that yep. was the idea behind the disco ball. Yeah, and it did. Uh, I mean, uh, honestly, and, we did and, everything. And I love the disco ball. And that's what I love because I, I experienced all this stuff and, you know, and you learn. Like, you learn what worked, right. what didn't and work, I'm all not this stuff. I'm not afraid to try anything three times. Yeah. yeah. And the first I mean, we had, had a bubble machine on top of the salon that would yes, shoot we did. bubbles across the street. We've had drag queens out in front of the salon. We had popcorn out in front of the salon. So when I sat down here for this interview today, I said to Matt... <laughs> You know I love that spinner. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, we have a big wheel over there. We have a big wheel, but I had a spinner outside of the salon. We, I just wanted people to just spin so you would stop. And we put pet food out there. We, I tried anything. Yeah. You just got to hustle. Yeah. You got to hustle. Yeah. You got to do it every day. Hey. I'm so excited for what you're doing. Thank here. you. And I, I really I'm glad you came. I am too. I really am. Yeah. So 
guys follow Sam Burns, Sam Burns Biz on everything. Uh, on uh, uh, on everything, yeah. yeah. And uh, thank you to everyone that actually hung out and watched this whole thing. There was a lot of people on here thank you. throughout, on, on and off. Yeah. So hopefully, um, hopefully you got some, you know, some tips out of this and or whatever. Not, if you not, got, you got to go through memory. You lane. definitely heard. <laughs> that's more of my story than anyone's ever heard. So that's really why I came here. I right. To pull back the curtain. Appreciate um, that. Yeah, you're welcome. He's the only guy that would come and not promote himself really at all. He just talked about, you know, our stuff. But, but you, hey. you're, you know. You're a great man. I think people. Thanks. I want people to know your journey. So are you, Sam. And I th thank you. I appreciate it. All thank right. You. Well, thank you guys so much. If you have any questions, post them below. Sam, while he's on the plane, he'll be answering them. <laughs> I absolutely <laughs> will. You can uh, help me to it, Sandy. Yes. I'll respond to that. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next show. Thanks. <laughs>